mind-blowing thing right out there as I'm trying to do story time with you. This is why you actually need the high five habit. I'm gonna yell as loud as I can because um, he is literally right outside my window right now. Okay, uh, can you guys hear me okay? Um, this is a disaster. Okay, let me just let me just tell you the day that I had today. Um, I tried to do this on mobile phones. It would not work. I tried to do it on the screen and porch. I could not get a connection because I thought it would be nice to read to you guys outside. Oh my God. He is literally right outside my window. I then came into the office. We could not get the two mobile phones to work. I had to download Chrome. Uh, oh, I now see that the broadcast is screwing up. Is that happening, guys? Do you see the broadcast screwing up? Is that a thing? Is that actually happening? Yes, it's happening. Um, hold on a second. Let me see what's going on. Um, it's, it's frozen on my end. Okay, this is a total disaster. We are trying our best, everybody. I don't know what is happening or why this is happening right now. Um, but uh, let's see. Is it totally frozen now, everybody? Because I see that Social Live is totally frozen. I'm sorry that you're having to watch me have a complete uh, tech breakdown live, but uh, at least the landscaper's gone, right? So here's what I'm gonna do. I see that I am um, completely frozen. Oh boy, uh, on social live, I don't know what to do. Um, Stand by to go live. I don't know what's happening. And I'm sorry that you're having to watch me have a breakdown, everybody on Instagram. I don't know what's happening. Um, I think we're going to have to redo chapter three. <laughs> That's what I think we're going to have to do because I don't know what's happening. Um, oh, boy. Uh, okay, let's rejoin social life. Thank you for your patience, everybody. And thank you for cheering me on. Um I think that we should end this broadcast. Uh, I'm going to end the broadcast on Social Live. I, I, guys, I don't know what to do on Social Live, but I... Hey. Hi. Can you hear me, Mel? Yeah. You're good. So we've, are you still on Instagram? Yeah, I'm still on Instagram there. Hi, everybody. Are you enjoying this uh, absolute shit show that's, uh, that you're watching <laughs> unfold here? Um, Thank you a lot. Okay, well, do I want to go live or do we want to just kill this? I mean, how bad is it? You're good now. Okay. We'll try it one more time. Okay. 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 So uh, thank you, everybody, on Instagram. Thank you, everybody, on uh, Facebook and YouTube and LinkedIn and Twitter. Uh, as is the case, we are uh, experiencing or we're experiencing technical difficulties. And uh, I first want to thank everybody on Instagram for cheering me through this because as I was down with you all, my team was uh, scrambling to get everything done. So great job, team. High five to everybody in the green room uh, trying to manage this live broadcast. And thank you to everybody on Instagram that was cheering for me as we were literally experiencing nonstop breakdowns. And, you know, I think one of the things that's interesting about uh, the high five habit is that it's so important to know how to lift yourself up, particularly when things are not going your way. And it has felt, honestly, this morning, like nothing's been going my way. It has felt like since I stepped into trying to make this broadcast work, nothing is going my way. And, you know, as I've explained, we've experienced tons and tons of tech challenges. And I think the old Mel would have been uh, crying. I was definitely on the verge of tears at many moments while the cameras were rolling live here. Uh, the old Mel would have had this crazy emotional outburst afterwards. But you have to know that things are not always going to go your way in life. You're not always going to have a computer that stays connected. You're not always going to have uh, a moment where uh, things are going to go perfectly. And things certainly did not go perfectly this morning uh, with the landscaper showing up, with me being 20 minutes late and getting the tech sorted out, with the computer not working. And part of the high five habit is catching yourself when you feel the wave of anxiety coming, when you feel everything breaking down, and knowing how to A, keep going, knowing how to not make yourself wrong as things are going wrong, 
knowing how to pick yourself up in real time as people are watching and people are depending upon you, and knowing that somewhere in the back of your mind, even though things are not going according to plan, that you have the ability to keep going, that you have the ability to um, just ride the ups and downs of life. I mean, I think that's the point of life. You're not gonna necessarily enjoy it all the time. You're just gonna have to learn how to live it, the ups, the downs, and you certainly witnessed it in real time today. And so um, what I wanna do is thank you for being here. Thank you for watching through the technology shit show. Thank you for tuning in and um, we are gonna get started. So uh, chapter three, I have a few questions. Uh, and chapter three starts on page 33, everybody. And uh, let's go to how exactly do I start doing the high five habit? Uh, it's very simple. Every morning before you look at your phone or let the world in, take a moment to be with your reflection. The second you leave that bathroom, almost every moment is going to be about other people. Woo! Sorry, I'm just feeling very overwhelmed at the moment. Um, so let me take a minute. <laughs> let me take a minute and use something from my book that I call High-Fiving My Heart. I don't know if anybody else feels overwhelmed by life right now, but I certainly do. And so when you feel overwhelmed, which I really do right now, uh, whew, I tried to push through it and I can't push through it. Um, you're going to put your hands on your heart and this is a way to snap yourself out of those moments where you feel really overwhelmed by life. And this is something I cover in chapter 13, so we're jumping ahead on today's reading. And you take a deep breath, just push on the center of your chest. It's called high-fiving your heart. And um, whew, and you're just gonna say, I'm okay. I'm safe. I'm loved. And I'm I you might need to do it 83 times some mornings and this is one of those mornings where I definitely feel that I need to do it a couple times. You're going to take an exhale again. And you can do this with me. In fact, why don't you do this with me? I'm okay. I'm safe. I'm loved. 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 And the more that I say it, the more I feel myself coming back into my body. The more I feel my mind stop racing the more I feel myself getting grounded back into what I call body confidence, which is not feeling confident necessarily about your looks, but feeling comfortable in your own skin. I'm okay. I'm safe. I'm loved. Um, you know, and I think what you're witnessing, everybody, is I've been on the road for four weeks straight trying to launch this book, do the things that you're supposed to do to be successful as an author. I have never done a book launch at this scale. I've never done anything that has been as successful as this has been. And it has literally kicked the shit out of me. It has just depleted me 
to be on the road for four weeks straight to do uh, as many amazing podcast interviews as we have. And um, I am exhausted. And so what you're, fee- what you're seeing in real time is you're seeing that, um, you know, regardless of what you think it looks like on the outside, you know, when, when somebody like me hits the New York Times bestseller list or has the number two uh, selling book on Amazon, it may look absolutely incredible from the outside, but on the inside, like we're running a million miles an hour. And, you know, I, I am absolutely committed to making sure that this book is accessible to everybody. And I have read your reviews and the reviews are jaw dropping and transformational. And so many of you have said, this is the single best book you've ever read. You're reading it twice. You have said that it has taught you for the first time in your life to learn how to love yourself. And one of the core tenets inside this book is to give yourself the support that you need. And, you know, one of the things that I learned in real time this morning is that I cannot do tech on my own and also be in front of a camera. And when I start to experience technology breakdowns like you witnessed in real time, whether it's me setting up cameras or me not having the proper browsers or me having landscaping folks who are amazing show up right in the middle of a broadcast and kind of experience breakdown after breakdown after breakdown after breakdown, just on the tech side, all little stupid stuff, all simple things, I get so emotionally depleted that it's really hard for me to be present in front of the camera. And so what you actually just witnessed was me having an emotional breakdown from being exhausted, from not, uh, from, from making the mistake that you make in your life, which is you take on too much, you don't slow down, you don't, uh, really think through what is the support that you need. You don't take the steps to put things in place and then you barrel through. And barreling through lasts for short bursts and eventually you'll end up doing what I just did. You will have an emotional breakdown. And um, it's okay. Like it's, it's okay. And what you also witnessed is that when you do feel yourself overwhelmed by life and how many of you feel overwhelmed by the demands of your life right now? Absolutely. The stars on, or the hearts on Instagram are going absolutely crazy right now. Um, because I think it's been a lot, everybody. Uh, it's been an absolute lot. Uh, to go through the last 18 months and to deal with all the uncertainty. And, um, you know, I want you to understand that your emotional needs are critical. And so learning how to stop when things get to be too much and putting your hands on your chest and giving yourself a high five and learning how to come back into your body This is something you need to know how to do. Um, You also need to know how to high five yourself in the mirror because what would happen normally, everybody, if I hadn't discovered the high five habit and I hadn't been practicing it full stop, what would have happened is after this broadcast, I would have beat myself up all day long. Why can't I do everything right? Why can't I put the proper things in place. Why can't I ever slow down? Why can't I do this? And so I would make what was already sort of this difficult thing to process become even worse because I just beat myself up all day. And, you know, the truth is that your life will never go perfect. There will be tech breakdowns. There will be things that go wrong. There will be stuff that feels overwhelming, even though it seems kind of stupid and trivial to other people. And you got to know in those moments how to catch yourself when your attitude starts to think, sink. You got to know in those moments how to put your hands on your heart and how to breathe and how to say, I'm okay, I'm safe, I'm loved. You got to know how to use these tools so that you can support yourself through the ups and downs in life. It's fucking easy to support yourself when life is going well. It's easy to support yourself when you're winning. It's easy when you're surrounded by all kinds of people standing around you that are there to lend a helping hand. And I've got an amazing team. I got three people, four people actually, that are here on this broadcast with me. You can't see them. 
and they're trying to help too. And so there are going to be times in your life, even when you're surrounded by support and your emotions are going to still get you the best of you. And so, you know, I think that one of the gifts of having a breakdown live on camera with you and having you see how many things went wrong <laughs> in one simple broadcast and also watching me go down and then come back up, this is what this is about, everybody. This is about learning how to be so self-aware you can catch yourself, learning how to embrace your humanity and learning more importantly how to high five yourself both physically, metaphorically, spiritually, energetically, okay, so that you can support yourself. And, you know, it's really cute. I love everybody on Instagram um, and Facebook and YouTube, everybody who's cheering for me. And it's so cute. When somebody else is in breakdown, everybody literally is like, oh my God, let me help you. Maybe that's the secret, everybody is actually having a breakdown in front of other people because then other people will help you. When you try to have it all uh, handled, when you try to think every, tell everybody that you know you got it all figured out, that's why you're constantly alone. That's why you're so exhausted. One of the things that we learned, by the way, from this is I should never be alone when I'm trying to do a live broadcast because it just sets you up. Is there something in your life that you realize that you need support with, that you're not asking for help with? Why don't you put it in the comments? I just learned a very valuable lesson that I should never try to do something live that is a multi-platform live stream without having a human being here, simply so that somebody can go and talk to the landscape person and say, don't blow the deck, or so that in case I need to find a charger that they can do it or so that if we have tech breakdowns, they can call the team. What is it that you realize, wow, I'm acting like I got it all figured out and I actually need support in this area? Because identifying it is super, it's like the first step. Identifying where you need support. You need, you need support with parenting. I'm pregnant and I need people to stand up for my needs. I need to ask for help to slow down. I need support from friends when depression creeps in. There are so many things, Mel, that I need support with. Where do I start? What's the area that you feel like you're not going to high five? So there's some area of your life, and I love the high five as a decision-making tool. Oh, see, preparing for presentations at work. I need support with that. I do too. I can't create alone. I got to create where I'm reacting with people and freestyling in person. I need support with my finances. I need support with becoming a better leader with my team. I need support in expressing my emotions. Uh, yes, it is hard to ask for help. And one of the reasons why it's hard is because most of us don't even identify where we need help. And it's clear to me that I need help in this aspect of what I'm doing. And, you know, thankfully, I have a phenomenal team. And tomorrow, the broadcast will be different because I will have help. We will be on time. We will have somebody here. Uh, our team that's remote will be supported, too, by the person that's here instead of having to deal with me while I'm in breakdown. Um, I see that, uh, people, I see somebody saying I walked away from over 20 years as a VP and I'm procrastinating. I'm not starting my dream. I need support. Awesome. 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 I need support because my mother just died. I need support because I'm new to this country. So this is excellent. 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 And one of the ways that you can identify everybody where you need support in your life is what's an area of your life that you don't feel like high-fiving? Like a high-five is an encouraging sign. A high-five is something you celebrate. A high-five is an area of your life that it feels good when you're in it. Now, I high-five, by the way, any kind of production we do when I have uh, team members here. But I've noticed that for me personally, trying to do anything, whether it's a speech that's virtual or doing a broadcast that's virtual and not having another human being here, it is literally a recipe for disaster for me. I do not high five that ever. 
And so you can use the high five, everybody, as a decision-making uh, tool, a self-awareness tool. Where in your life, what area of your life would you not high five right now? And that is an area, everybody, where you need more support. You need more support for yourself. You need more support uh, with your own emotional needs and you need support from somebody else. Okay, so that's takeaway number one today. I am going to read a little bit more from chapter three, but given that this was such a kind of crapshoot today and we had a totally different breakthrough and we gave you a preview on chapter 13, so you never know what you're going to get when we do the live stream here. But I'm going to read a little bit more of chapter three, but I think what we're going to do tomorrow is we're going to start again with chapter three, only because uh, I want to make sure that when we put this up on YouTube and when it's memorialized for real, that we get a good reading of chapter three, Soup to Nuts. But let's read a couple pages. I think that given that you've shown up, uh, you deserve to have a couple pages of chapter three, and then we'll start again tomorrow on chapter three because it's the full FAQ. Now, for those of you that just identified where you need to ask for support, and where you need to be better at giving yourself support. I want you to listen to the first high five habit, which is high fiving yourself in the mirror. Because learning how to start your day by sending yourself into the game of life by high fiving the mirror, something I did this morning, and something that I can draw on as I am moving through my day, okay? It's important to know the basics about this. How exactly do I start doing it? Well, it has two simple, powerful steps. Number one, standing in front of the mirror, just be with yourself for a second. Don't focus on your appearance, go deeper. See the person who is inside that body, the spirit beneath the skin and the soul beneath the face. And how often have you ever done that? Right now, you probably mindlessly brush your teeth or you pick yourself apart. I want this to be an intentional moment of reflection and of being with yourself, okay? I want this to be for you. The rest of the day is probably going to be for other people. So I want you to literally take this moment for yourself. Uh, number two, when you feel ready, high five yourself in the mirror. Notice how your mind goes quiet. You might feel a boost of energy. You might feel a sense of comfort. Almost as if by going like this to yourself, you're saying, it's going to be okay. You might think, I got this. This high five in the mirror, everybody, it's a powerful moment. Without saying a word, you're telling yourself, I love you, I see you, I believe in you. Let's go. Don't rush it, revel in it. Because this moment is for you. Why do you do it first thing in the morning? Well, there are two reasons that I want you to make the high five habit a habit that you use to start your day. Number one, it will impact your productivity and how you show up all day. When you high five yourself first thing in the morning, you set a positive tone for your day. And research shows your mood in the morning impacts your productivity for the rest of the day. You may be surprised by the shift. Caroline told me that she was amazed by how weirdly motivated she felt all day after doing the high five. Or, Gloria said, you may find that the high five creates an infectious energy that stays with you all day. She wrote, quote, I was cheerleader in school, so I chanted an old cheer in front of the mirror, and then I fell on the floor laughing like a crazy lady. I am 76 years old, but 76 years old young, and I feel good. Nikki said she felt it too. I just walked by the mirror and high five myself. I felt a little silly. And then I literally laughed out loud. I said, you go, girl, and went about my way. What a feeling, Mel. I feel unstoppable after high-fiving myself. I'm on my way. And now it feels like, who's coming to? Start your day in a positive state, and you're more likely to take action. And action is the secret. You can't think your way to a new life. You must take the steps to create it. Basically, the high five sets you in motion to take control of your life. And the second reason why I want you to do the high five habit every morning is because it teaches you to put your own needs first. That's what you're doing. From the moment you wake up, you come first. And I love this insight that Nikki shared with me. How is it that I'm able to encourage other people all day long and yet I don't take the time to encourage myself? 
In fact, I just now shared this with a friend. You are enough all on your own. You are beautiful, unique, and creative. Learn to love and embrace yourself. And wouldn't you know, that is the very thing. I, me, that is what I needed to hear. I made it, it made me realize I put everybody else before me and I need to put starting, put, put, made, I need to start putting myself first. So instead of getting up every morning and looking at social media or emails or picking yourself apart or taking care of everyone else, just take a moment and give that same love, support, and attention to yourself. As Nikki said, it's time to go look in the mirror and give myself that pep talk and a high five for being awesome. So here's one of the top questions we get. Can anybody guess what the top, one of the top questions we get about the high five? Seriously, this is kind of funny. Do I have to touch the mirror? I don't want to touch the mirror. <laughs> there are a lot of you, the very neat freaks out there. Look, you can do this however you want to do it. It's your high five habit. You can touch the mirror. You don't have to touch it. You can raise your hand, whatever. Just give a high five. Give it a low five, a high five, whatever you want, a middle five. Spread your fingers. Keep them together. Whatever. It doesn't matter how you do it. Just make sure you do it. Why do you high five in the bathroom? We're on page 35, everybody. The bathroom is one of the few places you're bound to be alone and face-to-face -face with yourself. If you're at the gym, at work, or at school, you'll probably feel too self-conscious to try it. Plus, you already have a routine every morning when you stand in front of that mirror, so just add your high five to your routine. Research shows that when you stack a or pair a new habit, the new high five, with an old habit, brushing your teeth, you're more likely to do it. This is the scientific reason why I want you to do the high five in the morning after you brush your teeth. One mindfulness trick I love is to mentally be where my feet are. As you fix your hair, shave your beard, or apply your makeup, don't drift into autopilot. Take a moment to pause and actually be with yourself because an intentional glance in the bathroom mirror is meaningful. It can be an intimate moment of self-recognition, appreciation, even love. It might be your one chance all day to acknowledge your own strength, beauty, and fabulousness, but rarely it is until now. Um, let's read to the bottom of 36, and then we're going to call it a day. How's that sound, everybody? Uh, does it have to be in the mirror, or can I just high-five my hands together in the air? Uh, yeah, it has to be in the mirror. It, it, if you high-five in the air, that's not a high-five. That's an awkward clap. The mirror is required, and science explains why. You are fusing the positive neural association that your brain already has programmed in it with a high five. I believe in you. I love you. I see you. I celebrate you with your own reflection. This habit is the beginning of a beautiful new partnership with yourself. You have lost a piece of yourself in the busyness of life. I know I sure have, and you saw me crying about it this morning. This morning high five is the fastest way to become more connected to yourself, your needs, your goals, your dreams, and the greater forces around you. Why is it called the high five habit? Well, habit is just a fancy word, everybody, for pattern. Habits are easy to learn when you turn them into small, simple things you practice every day. The high five feels so good, you'll find it's an easy habit to remember and repeat. I call it a habit and not the morning high five because a habit must be repeated in order to become second nature. You are making the mistake of waiting to feel worthy of love and celebration. And I want to change that by making self-love, self-empowerment, and self-celebration a habit. For those of you asking how you can order the book, it's available wherever books are sold, seriously. Go to Amazon, go to Waterstones in the UK, just Google the High Five Habit, and uh, you'll find it anywhere. Go to your local bookstore. It is out in English worldwide. Uh, 23 languages and counting are already coming. And so um, I want you to uh, know that you can basically get it just about anywhere books are sold. Thank you for asking. And by the way, thank you for uh, buying yourself a copy. Thank you for purchasing this for friends. Seriously, when you um, 
send this to a friend. It's like giving them a high five. And so it's an incredible gift that you can give to somebody. Surprise them today with a copy of this New York Times bestseller. This is the number two uh, selling book of the week last week on Amazon. Number one audio book in the world right now because of your support. Please, please, please grab yourself a copy of this today. Um, and I love it uh, that Mickey's saying this high five habit, it works. Uh, it works. Um, and so should you be high fiving yourselves or loved ones? You should high five yourself first. You're already excellent at high fiving everybody else. I want you to learn how to high five yourself. And when you feel the power of high fiving yourself, then you will be able to teach other people the high five habit so they can empower themselves too. Audible, by the way, the audiobook, yes, of course I read it. Of course I get emotional. Uh, Barnes & Noble named us, by the way, as one of the top 10 books of 2021. They just sent us out on their newsletter. We've only been out for a week and a half, and they're already saying we are one of the top 10 books of the year. Um, so thank you, thank you, thank you, everybody. Um, in fact... The high five habit really quickly becomes second nature. For those of you that keep forgetting to do it, here's a simple tip. Take a post-it note, literally any post-it note. Just take a post-it note and put it on your mirror and write high five or draw a heart or write I believe in you on it and have that environmental trigger on your mirror be the thing that reminds you or triggers you to do the high five, okay? And thank you for all the coaches and therapists and doctors that are writing and saying that they are recommending this book to their patients and their clients. I do believe this is an extraordinary tool, the high five habit, because for trauma, for anxiety, for self-esteem, for self-worth, for addiction, we've heard of uh, tons of people that are able Basically, we had a couple people write to us and say, I'm sober because of the high five habit. I am having, I hear people sharing it in AA meetings. So please, please, please uh, keep buying, keep sharing the book, keep sharing what you are learning. Um, I love that uh, you're listening to this with your 14 year old. I love that uh, you guys are buying copies of this. Thank you for that. Uh, in fact, it will become second nature very quickly. Dominique wrote, I woke up in the middle of the night to let my dog out and I was walking by a mirror. I stopped, I high-fived myself and went back to sleep. The high-five habit has already become a part of my life, even half asleep. And the more high-fives you do, the more you find yourself loving the habit itself, which also means you are in love with the process of learning to love yourself again. And that's what the entire book is about learning to love yourself and support yourself through the ups and downs of life that's what it's about ah okay so um i am just looking real quick to see if their anxiety is a huge issue for me or does this help with anxiety absolutely it does because part of what anxiety is about is constantly worrying about what's coming the high five habit grounds you in the now it is a habit of showing your brain that you are the kind of person that empowers, encourages, and believes in themselves while you're working on yourself. The other reason why it's really helpful for anxiety is because when you high five yourself, your brain gives you a drip of dopamine. It also uh, gives you a little celebratory jolt because your nervous system recognizes a high five. And that's the super exciting thing, everybody, is that the high five is unlocking programming that's already in your body. It's neural associations that have been created by high fiving everybody else. You see, you've high fived everybody else your whole life. That's where the power of this comes in. For those of you that are writing that you struggle with anxiety and depression, this is a enormously important tool for you to learn about. It's enormously important research for you to understand. And the reason why this person right here, Jeremy, is saying it made me more excited to leave the house. Um, I see Lily saying I'm almost done reading it and I'm actually going to reread it right away because this is the kind of book that has wisdom on every single page. I know the book is backwards, everybody. That's because I'm filming in selfie mode and I, backwards on Instagram, 
Um, it is not comparable to The Atomic Habit uh, in that The Atomic Habit is not a deeply personal book. It's a deeply scientific book. The Atomic Habit makes you an expert at the science of habits. This will make you an expert at loving yourself. This will teach you based on science. And yes, there's lots of science in here that the power of habits covers, that atomic habits cover, that uh, this book covers because the science of habits is all the same. I'm teaching you a number of habits using science that will help you learn how to love yourself, believe in yourself, help you settle yourself when anxiety rises up, just like you saw happen live for me in this live stream. Um, and so, yes, if you loved Atomic Habits or if you read it or if you started it and were like, boy, this is dry, I don't know if I, I can get through this, regardless of which camp you fall into, this is a book you're going to love because it uses all the science that's in Atomic Habits, the power of habits have from leading habit researchers and explains to you in very simple ways how to create new habits, whether it's high-fiving your heart whether it's high-fiving your reflection every morning, whether it's flipping yourself from a state of, oh my God, into what if it all works out, whether it is looking for hearts as a way to train your brain as a habit to see what you want it to see. There are all kinds of habits in this book, all grounded in science. Um, anyway, I am exhausted from the last four weeks and clearly since I was just crying on this live stream and needing to uh, <laughs> give myself a high five and thank you for those of you that are commenting that you listened to my broadcast with Fern and uh, that's why you tuned in today. Uh, yes, you should recommend this to your daughter who's struggling with an eating disorder because as you know, an eating disorder is not about food. It's about self-worth, self-esteem and self-love and control. And anxiety. That's what the that's what it's about. Um, I also see that Marie uh, Forleo, my dear friends, podcast dropped this morning. Thank you for those of you who have tuned in from that. Make sure you listen to both Fern and Marie's uh, 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 podcasts. They're both excellent conversations and very different from one another. Um, and uh, in case nobody else tells you today, let me tell you that I believe in you. I love you. I celebrate you. I'm always here high-fiving you. And now it's your turn to learn how to believe in yourself and love yourself again. Um, and that's where the high-five habit comes in. I will be back tomorrow. And uh, I want to thank my amazing team who uh, was tethered to me uh, through our other platforms this whole time and supporting me through uh, what was an emotional roller coaster of a live stream for me. And uh, without them here, I would have just hit end. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to go to my bathroom and high five myself. So thank you to my amazing team. Thank you to the tools in this book. And thank you to you for being here. I love you. I believe in you. I'll see you tomorrow and we'll pick up on chapter three. Bye, everybody.